We know actors who are part of the SAG-AFTRA are on strike, but did you know that the union also includes singers? This morning, Fletcher Sheridan, who is part of the SAG-AFTRA singing committee, is joining us with that part of the story. And this is something we don't always think about. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it's it. An absolute honor. Thank you very so much. So what has it been like for all of you? It's been a really tough go. Obviously, this contract, especially for singers, is a, a lifeblood for us. This is the TV theatrical co contract that we work the most as a category. So yes, this strike is very near and dear to us, and we are very involved in in standing up and being heard. And, you know, some of this has been a little confusing because we know that you know soap operas can go on, reality TV can go on, scripted stuff cannot for the most part, but there are carve outs. So, what is prohibited for you, and what is still allowed? Um, so, anything being done by the AMPTP is out. Um, but sound recordings for albums and stuff, that's fine. Um, theme park music, that's fine. Uh, net code stuff, so uh, things like The Voice, like Idol, mm -hmm. those can go on. Um, so there, there are some avenues of work, but again, the, the primary one is TV theatrical, and it's, it's a fight we need to have. Is it um, affecting you and your friends in terms of not being able to work at all, or are you finding work in other areas and able to it's still kind of make a definitely living? definitely making, making a living difficult. You know, already coming out of the, the pandemic, you know, I know some people that are questioning moving away and, and having mm -hmm. to make those hard choices. Um, but this, again, we, I think we all as a community are unified in understanding that this this is the time to make a stand. But even moving away, they'd still be part of the union if they're still doing the same work, uh, right? It, Depending it, on the state, I yeah, guess. Yeah, it's hard to do what we do elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so much of the music business is here in LA that going elsewhere, it's not, it's not on the same level. It's a whole other level here in LA. How do you think this plays out, uh, depending on how long it lasts? Do you think it's gonna have permanent changes on the industry as a whole? Well, you talked about already people moving away. Well, I hope it has permanent changes on the industry for good. I'm really proud to be standing up to this machine that has reduced us to this liability to offset. You know, if you're not an A-lister, you know, which is 0.2% of the union, if you're not one of those 0.2%, mm -hmm. you are a liability to offset or offshore like they do with us singers. And tell me about that. Okay, so buckle up, blow your <laughs> mind. Singers are actors. Um, they are contractually, and I don't mean like granola, crunchy granola abstract singers are actors. Uh -huh. I mean, contractually, we are actors, principal performers, yet these companies will go behind our backs and make the composer pay for us. That's like getting an A-lister to be in your movie and having the director pay for that A-lister. It's so ethically wrong. Um, and then they'll go so far as to put in the composer's contract cryptically that they're forbidden to hire union talent. Mm -hmm. It's bordering on illegal and we finally have stood up and said you cannot do this. We are principal performers negotiating with you you pay us, don't find some magical Hollywood thinking, Hollywood accounting trick. We are negotiating with you as principal performers. You pay us. Well, it's an interesting conversation to have. It's one that a lot, not a lot of people maybe think about when we see people out on the picket lines like that. No. So I uh, wish you the best of luck Thank with you. your livelihood and, and your industry as a whole. Thanks Thank for being you here. Very much.